the long-awaited Outsiders thing. So what are we starting with? Well, now I got to – you got to give me a second. I got to look that up. I was doing all my research on everybody else other than the Outsiders tonight. Yeah, because you were – I thinking... have got some outstanding people that we have to talk about on this Icon series. Or, okay. <laughs> You're going to sh- – Clue us in here, or well, actually, let me call up the outsiders here and find out where we're starting. Mm. Well, as you're looking that up, I'm going to say John freaking Candy. John Candy, good call. <laughs> he's got so much. He's got like he had like eight, nine things going on just in 1981. Between TV series with SCTV and Saturday Night Live, he did a show. It's just, I mean, it was That's, it's crazy. Yeah. He he did, so and he's one of my fa- he's one of my favorite comedians of the time too. Yeah, definitely. And Steve Martin. Um, Steve, so- Steve Martin, yeah, yeah, definitely. Because we did Chevy Chase. Yeah, right. We have to yeah. do, we're gonna have to do Bill Murray too, I think. Oh, and, we'll save him for last. And Dan Aykroyd, last. You don't know how many how long my list is. Oh, okay. Excuse me. Okay, Steve Martin, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Shelley Long, Tom Hanks, Linda Hamilton, Dan Aykroyd, Michelle Pfeiffer, Meg Ryan, Sylvester Stallone. Whoa, Deborah whoa, 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 whoa. Back up, back up. I said Michelle yeah. Pfeiffer before, and you turned I it know. Down. I did a little bit of research on it, and, and we could do it. I, I, we, I could get by. Dude. What? I was ready last time. No, I wasn't ready. I had to look at it. I had to research. Scarface, Lady you're Hawk. on the fly. We were on the fly that night. I wasn't ready for it. Yeah, Rose, uh, just let you know, uh, Scott yeah. and I were completely random on that uh, last one we uh, posted. Oh, okay. I don't know what the hell you two were talking about. Oh, yeah. Matthew Broderick? Yeah. Well, no, because I got in, you know, because I saw the, the thing you guys sent me, because I was just talking to somebody the other day, and it's just like, you know, I haven't done a podcast in, like, forever. I think everybody's on vacation. And then I go in and check Twitter, and it's like, you know, are you down for 8 p.m.? And I'm like, okay, that's cool. I don't know what we're talking about, but that's fine. And then I get on my iPad, and my messenger is just like crammed full of YouTube talking You're, about God. Blow it up. It I'm is like, blowing up. What the hell? Don't you dare do anything without me. <laughs> I, I'm glad that you feel that way. I am. Totally. All right. So, so, so we're not doing this. St- we're not doing Stand By Me tonight, then. Okay. No, no, because we have been like biting at the bit for outsiders. So we ah. got to do this. No. Yeah. So yeah. I'm thinking uh, we start with Pony Boy and Johnny. Mm. Uh, let's okay. see. Pony Boy was. See Thomas Howell. Thomas Howell. And Ralph and Macchio. Ralph Macchio. The two main characters, basically. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. It was. It was really see Thomas Howell. Pony Are Boy. Are you guys was. on IMDb with this? Yeah. Well, I've got the I've got the the cast That's list up. So. That's awful. They could have picked a better picture of the Patrick Swayze than that. I agree. That looks Which like one? Patrick Swayze's ugly cousin. Anyway. Oh, yeah, that okay. That's name. that's in his later years. Uh, still, he was still hot in his later years. I mean, he had a TV show for, like, what, one season before he died? I think, it was, I think they went into second. It went into filming the second season, but I don't know if they ever finished it. Yeah. Which was, you know, yeah. moving for everybody to see him you know, push through what he was going through. So, Oh, absolutely. With the clock ticking. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, all right. Yep. Um, Pony Boy and Johnny. Oh. Is that okay, mm-hmm. or do you guys want to do something else? I'm no, good. good. I'm good. I'm good with that. Okay. Because, yeah. I mean, a lot could be said about Mr. Patrick Swayze and Matt Dillon. Well, yeah, but, you know, we want to kind of bring them in later. Yeah, you're right. You know, capture the audience. Yeah, there's, uh, and, you know, obviously Tom Cruise. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you do not. You are you are just, like, ruining the day that you can ever have to deal with Tom Cruise, aren't you? I, I will not have a lot of nice things to say, but I think <laughs> that's a good thing. I think, that, I think that's going to add some... Uh, you know, some uh, some good element to the podcast to not always be favorable. Well, I'm gonna. I'm true. really interested to hear what you have to say negative about him in the '80s. I mean, yes, he was the best at everything that he did, but 
okay, okay. But, I mean, don't Kurt, worry, Dave. I'm right behind you. There's quite a bit, bit of stuff he did in the 80s I wasn't happy with. Oh my god, okay. I almost feel like we should do that now. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Uh, you but, know uh, when he redeemed himself? Truthfully, are you ready for this one? Let's hear it. Minority Report. You think so? Uh, that's I like what that I one. think. Yeah, I like that's that one. that's when I started watching his movies again. Let's put it that way. What did you think of War of the Worlds? Um, I, no. No? I can't stand it when he's in a movie and he has to sing. There's no reason for that. Oh, my God. Did you see Rock of Ages? Oh, my no, God. I Don't even start. No. Not that was that the movie. worst movies ever. I knew <laughs> there he was going to sing. I did listen to some bits of what he was supposed to be singing. And I thought, dude, you got a vocal coach. There's just like no way in hell that's natural. No way. You had a vocal coach, which is basically something he needed all along. But, you know, who am I to judge? You know, I, I, I can make a good case for a few good men. Kind of. Oh, yeah. 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 So, but that was still 80s, though, wasn't it? So how no, about no, that? that no, that was, that was 92. Oh, it was? Yeah. Well, technically, uh, 92 is kind of still the 80s, so. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we go that way, do we? Yeah, that's the way I go. All right. 78 to 92. All right, so. <laughs> I agree with you, Rose. Thank you. There's bleed, <laughs> there's bleed over. There's definitely bleed over. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I just, it's, I, A Few Good Men does not feel like an 80s movie to me, though. It's not. But, you know, it was still a good movie. I don't necessarily watch it for him. I don't know. I, I disagree with you, Dave. I think with Jack Nicholson, Tom Cruise, and Demi Moore, they're all 80s. I mean, they were huge in the 80s, all three of them. And I think that kind of pulled them back into the 80s a little bit with that. I could feel it. I, I could see it being in an 89, 90, right around there. Yeah, he, Who was the other guy that was in it? Kevin Pollock? Uh, Kevin um, Bacon. Kevin Bacon oh, yeah, was in there? Kevin Bacon, Mr. Bacon. Yeah, see, there you go. That's 80s, man. That's all that's 80s. Quad, that's the quadfecta of 80s. Actors. Hey, you know, it might have been filmed in 89. It could have been. They could have had it on hold for like ever. <laughs> and they just decided, you know, to bring it out right at the crux of the uh, desert storm. There, there's no way that Jack no, got I'm... done with Joker makeup and then went to go do that. <laughs> he didn't have to. He's like, Leave the makeup on, man. Let's do this. <laughs> nice. All right. Are we doing Tom? Are we gonna do? Are we gonna do Tom Cruise now instead? Oh well. Are we gonna get that out of the way? Guy, they're due. Okay. See Thomas Howell, Ralph Macchio, the youngest, oldest actor in America. Yeah. All right. Like, so we start with uh, C. Thomas Howell then. Yes. Let's do that. Okay. All right. Ethan Hawke. We got some good outtakes on the front end of this one, buddy. <laughs> well, it, it, did, you did I listen? hear Rose drop the f bomb? Was that you? Did sorry. <laughs> yeah, you haven't been in podcast mode for a while, and uh, yeah. yeah, totally hey, did. So. I, I, I love adding the uh, Rose, the beep. Just anyway. me normally, just so you hey, know. Rose, we're recording. Oh jeez. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I use everything. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of That's which, who I am, people accept me or just leave it alone. And, 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 and Rose, did, did you listen to the uh, uh, new shoes interview? I didn't even know it was out. Oh, mm. see, I've gotten really bad about promoting. I, yeah, I was, you have. Yeah, I was. I was about that the other day. I was like, when is he going to post the new shoes thing? Oh man, it's been out for like two weeks. Two weeks at least. <sighs> Two weeks, two weeks. You sound like a bird. Valerie listened to it. Did you get in contact? Did she listen to it yet? Do you know? Um, honestly, like I said, okay. I've really gotten really bad about promoting. So, okay. Um, I okay. don't know if she knows. But I, okay. I was wondering if you had heard it. So, obviously, you haven't. So. No, darling, I haven't. Sorry. I've, I've been really super busy. I found you a new app that does karaoke. You, you don't subscribe to the podcast. I got you. All right. I didn't say that. <laughs> I do subscribe to the podcast. I know it's throwing you off, Dave. Like it's, it's all it's all your lake house living that you've been doing. Oh, and, well, it's that and work. 
<laughs> yeah. New job, like new job. Living. Yeah. yeah. Hanging out with Sandra Bullock and uh, Keanu Reeves. <laughs> Sandra Bullock and Keanu Reeves. Where did that come from? <laughs> That'd be from the movie. The that's not the letter, is it? Oh, no. uh. Uh-uh. The lake house. Is it called the lake house? I'm not sure, but it's the one where he comes back and visits her, and he's not really there because he's dead. No, it's like a time travel kind of a. Is that what I just said? Thing, yeah. <laughs> Same thing. Oh, we are so... Never watch it. I just do the premise of it. So, so right. way, way off base. Oh, yeah. Yeah, see <laughs> Thomas Howell. Oh, boy. Okay. See Thomas Howell. All right. Lord of Omens, give me sight beyond sight. Greetings, Starfighter. You have been recruited by the Star League to defend the frontier against Sewer and the Kodan Armada. Get ready. Prepare for blast Hey, Doc, we better back up. We don't have enough road to get up to 88. Roads? Well, we're going. We don't need roads. Remember, no matter where you go, there you are. This is 80s Reboot Overdrive Podcast. Oh my god. That is like so dated. Alright, this is 80s Reboot Overdrive. I am Dave, and online I've got 80s music girl, Rose. Hey, how's it going? It is so nice to talk to you again, Rose. So nice to be here. And I've got 80s Auto Reverse, Scott. Hello everybody, how you doing tonight? Look at that. What a what a great way of just jumping right in, Scott. You just sounded <laughs> like you you put on your podcaster voice. It was awesome. Yeah, I put on I put on the radio pipes. <laughs> radio pipes are on tonight. <laughs> All right, so yeah. listener, what we're going to do is we're jumping into another 80s icon series. Uh in the past you may have listened or I know you've listened to our Breakfast Club edition. We're going to do this again, but this time we're focusing on the outsiders. This particular edition, we are jumping right in and going to be talking about Pony Boy, C. Thomas Howell. So, as we do at the beginning of all these 80s icon series, we're going to be reading his filmography through the 80s and then talking about our favorite 80s moment with C. Thomas Howell. So, in 1982, he started with E.T., The Extraterrestrial. 1983, The Outsiders. 1983, again, he was in a TV series called Two Marriages. 1984, Tank. 1984, Grandview, USA. 1984, again, another movie called Red Dawn. 1985, Secret Admirer. 1986, The Hitcher. 1986, Soul Man. In 1985 through 1986, he was actually in the TV series Moonlighting. I do not remember that. That's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, like two episodes. Post office worker and waiter. Mm-hmm. All right. Big credits for him. That's uh, what they call a cameo? <laughs> I, I would think so. <laughs> uh, 1987, A Tiger's Tale. 1987, TV movie called Into the Homeland. 1988, ooh, Young Tuscanani. Did I say that right? Tuscanini. Toscanini, thank you. Uh, 1989, The Return of the Musketeers, and then he wrapped it up with another TV series in 1989, Nightmare Classics. So, favorite 80s moment with C. Thomas Howe. Uh, Rose, you get to jump in first. Wow, thanks. <laughs> C. Thomas Howe is kind of like one of the um, most versatile young actors that, you know, I've had the pleasure of viewing in movies and TV. Uh, You don't get a whole lot of child actors that can do that. You know, they switch. I mean, Michael J. Fox comes to mind, you know, pretty much. And uh, that's it. I'm sure there are other ones out there, but 
they don't make the transition very easy. Um, I'm honestly going to have to say that I really, truly loved him as Ponyboy Curtis in The Outsiders because he epitomized the character Ponyboy. Um, he was very sensitive and very caring, and he loved his family and his friends, and he was quite a prolific writer. Uh, if you've read the book, watch the movie. And um, I don't know, it just, he made it believable and he made it real and it wasn't forced. And if you've ever read any of the series, you know, um, the... S.C. Hinton. Right. Well, you know, the the writings, you know, for different people, like uh, Rob Lowe wrote this uh, book called Stories I Only Tell My Friends. And he actually talked about uh, being... In the movie The Outsiders and working with Francis Ford Coppola and how they had such grueling sets, you know, hours and hours of doing, you know, like the rain scene where they're fighting and, you know, it's just like they had to fabricate the rain and they're falling in the mud and all this stuff. And they had to do that take like, I don't know, like 49 times or something. And I'm exaggerating, but it seemed like it. But yet they just kept coming back and they kept making it, you know, that much more believable because that's how. Mr. Coppola rolls, I suppose. Hmm. But um, it doesn't seem like much of an effort for C. Thomas Howell. And I'm, and I'm just really glad that he's been so prolific in his career. Because if you notice, it says that he's, you know, did like 193 acting positions since he's been starting, you know. So, yep. Tony Boy Curtis. Bless his heart. Such a darling. Was there a favorite scene from The Outsiders that uh, kind of like showcase Pony Boy that you think of most when you think of that movie? Um, yeah, when he was uh, in the hospital with um, with Johnny. You know, after, yeah, with the, after the fire, right. and uh, when he was sitting there by his bedside and he was reading him, you know, the book. Okay, I thought that was very poignant. Mm. Uh, that just shows you how much he loved his friend, you know. I, I like the scene where he's talking to uh, was it Cherry Valance, and he's asking her, "Do you have? Do you see the sunset over? You know, on the other side?" Yeah. Yeah, that was really cool. That was a good moment too. Yeah. All right, Scott, what do you think? You know, it's hard to get away from Pony Boy because yeah, that was really what set him down the career that he had. You know, I mean, it really, I think that was a great role for him. And I do think he fit it really well. He did the, he did the kind of, you know, a little coy kind of a little bit on the shy side. Wasn't as outgoing and crazy as some of the other characters in it um, was more down to earth and was relatable. And I really liked him in that, but I also, <laughs> I really liked the movie Red Dawn, I thought he played a really good part in that one, too. So I'm going to say, uh, oh, man, but then there's The Hitcher. Okay, I got to go with The Hitcher. That was like one of the most intense movies of the 80s. It was, it was it incredibly totally intense. Was. Rucker, Hauer, Rucker Hauer was extremely creepy in it. and and uh, well, That's Rucker Hauer. Yeah, but... <laughs> I was going to say, nobody does creepy like Rucker Hauer. Yeah, uh, but I think... Uh, he see Thomas Howell played a great running scared kind of guy. You know, he was just like <laughs> the best scene was when he went, he was eating French fries and he picks up a finger. Mm. Okay. <laughs> you're like, you're like, Oh, that's just way out there. Creepy. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I think I'm going to go with that one for, for my pick for this. I just think he did a really good job of, of being, terrified most of the time and chased it's just good stuff he so. plays the victim very well i could see yeah yeah I could that so i was going to ask you, you you know anything that was memorable with that uh and you obviously remember the uh the french fry scene or oh yeah 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 that one popped out to mind as you mentioned the movie um you know i i'm going to go completely away from the popular movies. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't even know how popular this movie was with you two, but mm -hmm. Soul Man. Oh, are you serious? Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> what am I serious about? Dude, do you know it how? Up? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, just, just, just <laughs> hear, hear me. Hear me out on this. Okay. Go ahead. Out. go ahead. All right. All right. I'm not saying it's the best '80s movie in the world. Okay. I'm not. I'm not saying that at all. But there's a scene that's very that that I always remember from this movie. Um, so just for those that don't even remember the movie, uh, he's kind of a pampered guy. Uh, he's trying to get to Harvard. He ends up having to masquerade as an Af- young African American in order to get a scholarship so that he can attend Harvard. Um, and what I remember always is at the end when he's finally gotten caught, the uh, I believe it was a teacher or some advisor, James Earl Jones, that he's talking to. Mm-hmm. And you know he has this moment where he goes, well, I guess you learned what it was like to be an African American. And he goes, well, no, sir, I didn't, because I could always change back. Mm. Mm. And I thought, Mm. wow, that is just powerful writing, you know. And, you know, obviously, you know, with his 80s movie scripts and, you know, everything that he's been in, you know, for some reason, that moment of that movie stuck with me. There's not a lot of that other of that movie else that, you know, I'm really carrying with me. But just mm-hmm. that moment was just like, that's powerful stuff. Even though yeah. it was kind of in that movie, <laughs> you, and you had to muddle your way through that movie in order to get to that moment. But, yeah. you know, I mean, James Earl Jones, cool. C. Thomas Howell was, you know, he was cool and, and funny in that movie. So, um, so that's, you know, that's what I remember. That's, and, and so I, I, I wanted to go a little bit off base from where I knew that you guys would be going, which would be Outsiders and Red Dawn. Yeah, um, this movie is an interesting pick. I was going to actually bring it up later just to talk about it because it's uh, it's it's kind of uh, topical for what we are seeing in today's world. Um, a movie like this would not fly in. No, today's, it yeah. In, with yeah. today's racial tensions, this movie would be really a bad idea. Uh, I mean, it's it's all it's a lot of tongue in cheek, a lot of funny comedy stuff but i know that they have that serious moment in the end where he says you know i don't really know what it's like because i can always go back to being white or whatever or change back mm-hmm. but overall it's really interesting that this movie was able to be released at the time uh mm-hmm. because i think the racial tensions were uh a little bit less intense as they were now as they are now um you know i with all the stuff that's going on in the world today it's 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 nice to be able to break away and talk about lighter stuff, but this this movie happens just to bring up this point uh, about this. So sorry to get too serious on you guys. Uh, you know, no, and, and and just what I was thinking as you were describing that is that the '80s seemed to do that kind of feeling because if you remember, there was another tongue-in-cheek movie called Just One of the Guys, and. Mm-hmm. You know, the whole premise of that was because she felt that she was being tre- she wasn't being treated fairly, mm-hmm. so she was masquerading as a guy. You know, mm-hmm. so you know, in this case, it was kind of showcasing the way you know that women may be feeling, you know, being uh, uh, treated unfairly in the '80s, and so this was just another version of that, and this being you know mm-hmm. the uh, the African American uh, viewpoint, right. But you're right. I, I'm sure it wouldn't. It 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 couldn't be made in today's uh, world. No, you know, and that's uh, something my wife and I were talking about the other day. I know this is a little off topic, but we were, you know, talking about all the things that were going on in Dallas and the, all the other shootings that have been happening, and and the tension between, you know, with Black Lives Matter, and. And um, it just we were like, I thought we were making headway back in the 80s and 90s. It seemed like things were really cooling off. And and now it seems like they're going the other way and and things are getting worse and worse as far as uh, distance between the races. And it's it's really sad to see that that's happened. And I thought we were I thought we were moving in the right direction for a long time. So Uh, the 80s reboot soapbox. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> okay. We're allowed good to be topical. Stuff like okay. that. Yeah. All right. All right. So, so, um, so his first movie, E.T. You guys, do you remember C. Thomas Howell in that one? I do. I remember just him being one of the one of the buddies, 
uh, of was it the older brother? Was he the older brother? I thought he was the older one brother. Of the, one of the friends of the older brother. No, the older brother was, uh, he had curly hair, didn't look anything like C. Thomas Howell. Uh, what was the older brother's name? I don't know. Uh, but it was, he was like one of the friends that oh, helped okay. way. He, he was. He didn't play a big role in that one, from what yeah. I remember. Yeah, and some, my, my, uh, for some reason my mind had him as the older brother, but you're right. Yeah, I think he was, um, like you said, part of the uh, the bicycle kids. Yeah, the the bicycle kids that helped him out, the older brother's yeah. friend or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Because Henry Thomas wasn't really old enough to have uh, have kid, I mean, you know, friends that old, I suppose. Right. Yeah, it's been so long since I've seen E.T. I mean, I probably I watched it like a gazillion times, and now I look at it and I go, ooh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> Can't, can't do it. <laughs> now, now, what about Secret Admirer? Was that something that you guys watched? Ooh, what's that? Secret Admirer, that. Lori Loughlin, Kelly Preston. Um, mm-hmm. uh, C. Thomas Howell has a thing for, I think it was uh, Kelly Preston's character. He's starts to write like love notes to her, but... He's got mm. his best friend, Lori Laughlin, who's like rewriting the notes because they're so bad for him. So she's trying to help him, you know, get the girl. Oh, kind of like a Cyrano thing. Yeah. Wow, Corey mm. Heim was in that? That's crazy. I don't think I saw this movie. Oh, you didn't? Okay. I would've, no, I would have remembered. And Dee Wallace was in it, too. I would have remembered all of these people. There are yes people. There are some '80s movies I have not seen. Just you know it, it, that that happens a lot here uh, for me. <laughs> so, you know, I think I I think I saw it, but I don't recall uh, any of the details of it. Okay. Yeah. So Lori Laughlin didn't she grow up, go on to do uh, 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 Full House? Full House. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I like Fred Ward though. He's always awesome. Yeah, and I've been a uh, Kelly Preston fan. Um, mm. uh, there was a movie that she was in uh, called uh, Mischief. Um, but, yeah, don't want to go too deep into that conversation. No. <laughs> but uh, she was also in Space Camp, so that was... Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's probably where I noticed her from. All right, so Secret Admirer, I'm the only one that really remembers that one. What about... Grandview USA. You guys are fans of that one? I do remember that one. Small Town, Jamie Lee Curtis. I don't remember a lot of the details of it, but I do remember seeing it for sure. And I remember I liked it at the time. I I'd actually – I think about that one every once in a while, thinking about trying to find it and go back and watch it again. Just because it's – it's uh, I, you know, I kind of like the Small Town movies sometime. And that one takes yeah. place – that one's supposed to take place in Illinois. So. Oh, nice. Yeah, I was just looking at the uh, the picture on IMDb for Grandview USA, and that is completely 80s moment there with uh, C. Thomas. Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And uh, didn't I forgot Patrick Swayze was in it too? I haven't seen that one. You might like it. It's not. It's not a. It's not a uh, blockbuster or anything. But um, when did that come out? Eighty six. Eighty five. Eighty four. Uh, Eighty four. Yeah. 84. I'm trying to think what I was doing in 84. Yeah, I don't remember much of this, but looking at the cast, Jamie Lee Curtis, Patrick Swayze, Jennifer Jason mm-hmm. Lee. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I am uh, I should definitely revisit this one. Yeah, I don't think I've seen it since it came out, but I remember I did like it. Yeah, Life mm-hmm. in the Small Town of Grandview, Illinois is one that is just like any other city or town. Tim Pearson, mm-hmm. soon to be graduating high school, wants to go to Florida to study oceanography. Huh. Interesting. What an interesting premise for a movie. It doesn't sound like that's too dramatic. No, but apparently it gets a little bit more dramatic as something about a derby or something. It's a life. It's a it's a love triangle. Oh, so. okay. Oh, okay. That's probably why I didn't watch it. <laughs> well, it's not. It's not one of those. <laughs> And just exactly what are you insinuating? <laughs> I think that is. 
<laughs> I don't know. I'm not going to go there. Let's let's, just, let's move along. Move along There's nothing, nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. <laughs> nothing to see. Here. Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. So, so anything else that you guys want to cover about sea tongs in the '80s? Uh, into the homeland. Uh-huh. Was that like a TV movie? Anybody see that? Um, <laughs> what an awesome name. Trip Winston. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't oh, look at this one. Tiger's tail. Bubber drum? Really? What, they just run out of letters or something? Just somebody had a that scrabble board and they dropped it? Name. <laughs> it's got Anne Margaret in it, apparently. A oh, young man falls for his girlfriend's mother. Okay, what other movie yeah. does that sound M-G. like? Can we say class? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> We've already seen this movie, people. <laughs> yeah, one of the few uh, Andrew McCarthy characters I really did care for. And Kelly Preston's in that one, so now I've got to see it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. See, she's just like all over the place. I'm ready she for young I, I, I'm ready for the Kelly Preston um, icon movie or episode. <laughs> did she ever play like a main character, though? We could do sub, you know, we could do supporting roles. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly, she's not really been one of my favorites, but. Uh, she's very attractive. Yeah, she's very cute. Um, mm-hmm. You know, girl next door kind of look. Wasn't she in uh, Twins? No was That's she the one, know. she was the one in, in Twins that Arnold Schwarzenegger gets together with? Oh, oh yeah, I'm pretty sure, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so, she mm-hmm. was the one that was goofy one okay yeah i think that's when i had a crush on her yeah she's uh she's very lickable i mean likable <laughs> sorry saw the shot had to take it <laughs> nice no, <you're> nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah the rest of these i don't remember too much from the 80s yeah i don't this could go under the if we ever do this podcast uh toscanini this could go under the obscure 80s movies I don't even know what that one is. I've never even heard of it. You, have oh you my seen that goodness! One, Rose? Have you seen that one, Rose? What? Young Tuscanini. No, 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 no. no. Okay. I'm just oh. saying, you know, if we ever do the obscure movie series. Yeah, that one's obscure. I don't remember that one at all. Yeah. Maybe it was an indie flick or something. By the by, the cover art, it, it very looks very well. Looks like it could be. <laughs> Director was Franco Zeffirelli. Oh, love the way you twirled your R's there. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I was just trying to see if uh, Tank should have been memorable or not. Oh yeah. I remember that one with um, uh, what's his name? Um, James Garner. Yeah, James James Garner. Garner. I think I did see that because I, you know, I always had a, I would say I had a thing for James Garner, but I, I liked his characters. Because he always seemed really down to earth and kind of smart alecky. Mm-hmm. Rockford, Rockford Files. Files yeah. One of my uh, yeah. Love some Rockford Files. I, you know, I thought I saw Tank and I thought Tank Girl, and then I thought, no, he wasn't in that. <laughs> but I forgot there was just a movie called Tank. Yeah, doesn't like, he like hijack a tank? James Garner, like he works um, for the military. Sure. Uh, is like, like a contractor or something weird like that? I yeah. don't remember anything about this movie. Well, you know, I'm just going to... I keep going back and I keep losing it. And then I have to go back and I have to keep scrolling down to find stuff again. He plays Billy. Sergeant Major Zach Carey is serving what is his final tour of duty at an army base in Clemens, Georgia. Zach doesn't like the way the army keeps the base and the bar is not what... He's accustomed to, okay. So he goes off to base to get a beer. Wow, really? That's the whole movie? <laughs> um, yeah, he goes to the bar and one of the local prostitutes. What? I forgot. No wonder we didn't see it. Sounds awful. <laughs> you could explain the movie in detail like that. Yeah, you pretty much lost your audience. <laughs> I'm just saying. You could have just stopped, like, right there. <laughs> just stopped, yeah. Dude stole a tank. Some guy hitched a ride, and they went for, you know, hilarity ensued. The end. 
let everybody kind of piece together what they want, you know, and go, oh, yeah, there was a hooker. Oh, I remember that. So, yeah. You're a hooker? <laughs> oh, sorry, that's, that's the wrong movie. Oh. But once again, Dudley Moore, that would be another good mm-hmm. one to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah love love them oh my god yeah but you gotta go way 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 back talk about deadly more he was with the goons it was awesome so Had a prolific career anyway go ahead so i'm curious see thomas howell is there anything in his uh later career that stands out to you scott you want to take that one um i'm trying to look i remember seeing him in a couple pe- couple things but i cannot recall what they're called uh, what was it? I keep thinking that I, I, we watched a show called uh, Chicago PD, and maybe I'm remembering the wrong TV show, but mm-hmm. I seem to remember that he was in that, but I'm not finding it in his credits. Mm. So I feel like I'm giving misinformation. Well, that's why we have IMDb. This is true, it's but nice. I'm scrolling that's... through and I don't see it. So Someone told you erroneously. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can't recall. I can't see anything that uh, that I know of his later career. Yeah, uh, I'm a uh, actually. When you guys are all done, I've got a couple. You got a couple? Yeah. Okay, let's hear it. Well, apparently he was uncredited in the black or white video, Michael Jackson. Oh, okay. Really? He was. And then um, I remember seeing him in Gettysburg. Oh, yeah. So, when was, was that? Very, when was Gettysburg? That was... 93. That was a very good movie. And I don't like necessarily... I mean, it, it wasn't 1840? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> something, that, something or other? <laughs> yeah, he was married to Morgan Fairchild. Yeah. yeah um, thank you for reminding me. When the Civil War was. <laughs> I can't recall the exact years, but it was somewhere around there. Somewhere around that time. But yeah, no, but that was actually a very good movie. And I don't necessarily watch those types of things. Uh, I do now, but back then I probably wouldn't have because they live in a snooze fest. But I remember seeing it later, and I remember him being in it. And I thought, wow. Once again, played a very stand-up guy. You know. Always willing. He was. He played a very. Oh, he was in Gods and Generals too. Interesting. But um, in the Hillside Strangler, dude. Wow. But yeah, so that excellent movie. A lot of a lot of really good uh, actors in that. You know, but actually, I remember the movie Side Out. Okay, what was that about? He's a law student, and okay. he goes to California. And he ends up becoming a partner in a beach volleyball tournament. So um, that's really it. That's the whole movie. <laughs> um, that's really familiar. But uh, gun. in a world where a law student turns, <laughs> <laughs> where one man a stands soon. out. Soon, Steve Thomas Hall, Val Kilmer. <laughs> But uh, Courtney Thorne Smith was in that one, so that's oh. kind of like what I remember from it. Did you say was in it? Courtney Thorne Smith? Hmm. Nope. Sorry, didn't ring a bell. No? All right. Sorry. <laughs> well, I mean, she's Melrose Place. So, yeah, we're, oh. we're, we're, we're moving into the 90s on that one. I got the, uh, just kind of blanked out the whole decade of the 90s. Yeah, well, there was a period between then and now <laughs> that was called the 90s. <laughs> you might have, you know, you might have heard some of the music there, Pearl Jam. You know, anyway. <laughs> Just kidding, people. I do know I live in Seattle. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, all right. So, um, C. Thomas Howell, we, do we have final thoughts on that? Uh, we'll start with Scott. No, you know, I just I liked him. He played a really a lot of really good roles as far as um, uh, kind of the average guy. You know, he was like like the the small town movie. Um, oh, 
I lost Grandview, the name. Grandview. Yes, Grandview, Grandview, USA. Right. You know, it was just something that he was able to pull off just being the average Joe, you know, like Pony Boy was kind of average. He wasn't as, like I said before, he wasn't as outgoing and crazy as some of the, of his, of his gang buddies and, and uh, a little more down to earth and relatable. And so I just, it seemed like he played a lot of those roles really well. So, especially for somebody my age, which was right around, I think he's right around the same age as me. Hmm. Okay. okay. So Rose. I mean, I could agree with uh, uh, Scott's uh, depiction of him as Pony Boy as being average because I really believe he was like an onion. He had uh, layers. Okay. He just had to peel him back with a sharp knife. But um, there are uh, a lot of depth to him, I think, as an actor. And he does have that homegrown look about him. So he could easily, you know, he put him on a set anywhere. And he'd be he'd stand out definitely, but he would also be I don't know what the hell I'm saying. But anyway, he was just <laughs> he's a really good actor. And I'm like I said, I I get really sad when I see a lot of um uh, actors that started out and they had their heyday, you know, in our favorite decade and then they kinda go on to do like nothing. And it kinda makes you sad, you know, because you wonder what happened to that zeal and luster of your and then they can't you know, get a role in Hollywood to save their life. But, you know, to be able to be that versatile where you can do TV and you can do movies and then you can go, you can do animation. You know, I think it's probably like the actor himself saying, OK, hey, it's Hollywood as long as I'm working. I don't care what I'm doing. I don't have to do the blockbusters. I can do some indie flicks. I can do commercials I can do whatever. And I think he's really made it work for himself. So kudos to Christopher Thomas Howell. On his amazing acting career. Oh my gosh, I did not know that was his first name. Yeah. Christopher. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to say, uh, nature's first green is gold. Her heart is hue to hold. Her early leaves a flower, but only so an hour. Then leaf subsides to leaf. So Eden sank to grief. So dawn goes down to day. Nothing gold can stay. So, um, I think as I mentioned before, I did rip off Pony Boy's interpretation of the uh, that poem by Robert yeah. Frost uh, mm -hmm. for an English class in ninth grade, and mm -hmm. I got accolades from my teacher because it wasn't about, you know, everyone else's interpretation was just about leaves turning, but mm -hmm. you know, for me it was, you know. About, you know, the kids where they, um, uh, it was actually a little bit of Johnny's interpretation also, but like the kids, mm -hmm. you know, that, you know, as you get older, you're going to, uh, you know, uh, you know, you're gold as you're a kid. And then as you get older, things kind of change, you mature and it's not as gold as you were and as innocent as you were as a child. Mm -hmm. So in a lot of ways, unfortunately, that describes a lot of what you were saying, Rose, with C. Thomas Howe, is the 80s. We have all these great memories of him around being the star and being the uh, the main actor for the, a lot of these iconic movies. But in the subsequent roles, he, he's still acting. He's still doing his part. But he, it was nothing to the same magnitude mm -hmm. as what we had with the 80s. Right. So, so maybe that explains his career. Nothing gold can stay, unfortunately, a little bit more. But he's still acting. He's still out there, and I don't think he's a bad actor. You know, for his no. later stuff, it's just for some reason he's not able to get those roles that are as iconic as we remember them. Mm -hmm. And maybe we're jaded because you know we're just big fan of the '80s. I don't know. No, but I believe there's a lot to what you said there, and I think a lot of that one, the last part, you know, when you added, you know, it's not as easy to stay gold. You know, it was uh, very heartfelt and um, sentimental. Yeah, I, I'm I'm very deep like that. <laughs> <laughs> Did you uh, see how many things he has in post-production right now? He's, like, got seven or eight things coming out in the next couple of years. The guy, 
the guy doesn't stop acting. I mean, yeah. his credits go on and on. Yeah, he's That's been a so lot of cool. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. And just, Mutant vampire zombies from the hood. Yeah, I just noticed that one too. Yeah, I'm just nice. gonna. Keep I'm gonna have to watch that one. <laughs> you can do that. Uh, <laughs> Tell us all about it. A movie like that just begs watching. Once in a lifetime. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. He has got a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine things post production. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, so, social media credentials. Uh, kick us off, Rose. I am at 80s Music Girl on Twitter. I have a fan page on Facebook for 80s Music Girl. I'm 80s Music Girl on Facebook. I just said that. And then uh, Instagram. There you go. That's what I meant to say. I think that's it. Okay. Scott? Yes, you can find me at 80s Mix. I'm sorry. Got to start that over. At 80s Auto Reverse on Twitter and at 80s Mixtape Auto Reverse on Facebook or at Scott's Eye on Twitter also. All right. Cool. So I am Dave. Take care of our 80s Reboot accounts. That's Tumblr is going to be 80sreboot.tumblr.com. We're also at facebook.com slash 80s Reboot. Southgate Media Group dot com slash eighties reboot blog, um, and um, I'm forgetting one. I know email, but hold on. Twitter, Twitter at eighties reboot, uh, and then uh, if you ever want to email us, go ahead and shoot that over to us. We will read that on the podcast. That's eighties reboot at gmail dot com. Uh, the other thing we want you to do is go out and give us a rating review on iTunes. Tell us how wonderful we are. We love to hear comments. Um, even if you are saying bad stuff, but that's cool too because that feedback is feedback. So we appreciate it. Uh, so uh, thank you for reliving the 80s and have a wonderful night. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. We hope you've enjoyed this show. This podcast is part of the 80s Reboot Overdrive channel on Southgate Media Group. You can follow us on Facebook on the 80s Reboot group page. We're also on Twitter and Tumblr at 80s Reboot. We invite you to check out all the wonderful podcasts and blogs available at southgatemediagroup.com. And thank you for reliving the 80s. One morning I woke up earlier than usual. The church was colder than ever. Golly, that was sure pretty, huh? Yeah. It's like the mist is what's pretty, you know? All gold and silver. Too bad it can't stay like that all the time. Nothing gold can stay. Huh? Nature's first green is gold. Her hardest hue to hold. Her early leaves a flower. But only so an hour. Then leaf subsides to leaf. So Eden say to grief. So dawn goes down today. Nothing gold can stay. Where'd you learn that? That's what I meant. Robert Frost wrote it. I always remembered it because I never quite knew what he meant by it. I never noticed colors and clouds and stuff to you kept reminding me about. It's kind of like you were never there before. Yeah. I don't think I could ever tell Steve or Tubit or even Derry about the clouds and sunset. Just you and Soda Pop. Maybe Cherry Valance. Guess we're different, huh? Shoot, yeah. Maybe they, uh... Maybe you're right. Thank you.